Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Reiko Gazda, and I'm a senior engineering manager at Podme. And it's an honor today to be here in the Women in Tech conference with you. And I hope to share with you some insights during my speech part on how uh, we can rock and be superstars in our job search and in the recruitment process. And this is my good colleague, Inanna. Hello. So nice to be here with all of you today. I work as a senior product manager at SVD. Uh, and uh, actually, both uh, me and Reka have just uh, transitioned internally within Shipstead to new roles. Uh, and also, Reka, you work as a hiring manager at Shipstead. So hopefully, you're in good hands for some tips around internal mobility and job search. Was it? <laughs> All right. Okay, the clicker is dead. <gasps> you have to have some excitement at the start, right? Uh, okay, but I'm going to start uh, with talking about internal mobility. Uh, and just to briefly give you like a little bit of context, when I talk about internal mobility and mention lots of different companies, that's because they are all part of Shipstead. Um, good to know. Is it back on? Yes. Sweet. Cool. Uh, so why are we talking about internal mobility today? Why is this important? Um, I, I did some research, and uh, to be honest, it's a little bit depressing. This is from 2022, so the numbers are actually almost going down. 22% of the workforce in, uh, within tech in Europe is women. And if you zoom into developers, it's even less, right? So. Um, that's why it's so important for us to talk to each other about our careers um, and share tips and, and learnings and also mistakes, I hope. Um, uh, so on that note, I'm going to share some, some learnings from my uh, internal career at Shibstedt and uh, hopefully some concrete tips that you can take with you in the future. Uh, I would like to start asking you all a question. Um, have any of you ever changed roles internally at your company? Please raise your hand. Oh, nice. Great. Have you ever thought about changing roles at your company, but you didn't do it? Please raise your hand. Ah, it's a few. Okay. <laughs> Great. Think about why that was. Um, but going back a bit to the start then, I think many of us can, can relate to thinking that when we start out our careers, uh, we see it as this straight line from the start to the specific end goal, right? Uh, and then as time passes, and uh, sorry for using this uh, overused image, but then we realize it rather looks something like this, right? Um, and I think um, once we start our career, that can naturally trigger quite a lot of questions for us, right? Um, is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? Good question. Am I any good at this? Um, am I learning the right things for it to benefit uh, my future career, right? And I think uh, moving around between different roles in a company can be a really great way to answer some of these questions. If you're starting to feel that you're uh, not in the right place, that probably means that you're not in the right place. And if you're feeling really challenged in the role you are now, that probably means that you are learning lots at the time, right? And if you're starting to feel bored, that might mean that you're not learning enough. So to take it back, to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I'm going to give you some context about how my career in Shipstead started and where I am now. Um, I, I applied to Shipstead because I'm, I'm uh, passionate about the media industry. Um, and I'm also really passionate about working with product. So this was my idea. I was like, OK, I'm going to do really important stuff for society, work close to the journalists. Um, but then I ended up here, <laughs> um, in the login team, building the login solution for all the brands within Shipstead, so close enough. Uh, but what I didn't know then was that um, that was probably the best place in the company for me to be. I got to know the whole quite complex ecosystem of brands within Shipstead, and also um, I got to understand how the business works, right? And 
On top of that, I got to work with some really cool and smart and amazing people. And I found out that I really like to work with complex backend stuff, so who knew? Um, after that, I started to work in Aftonbladet as a product manager. And there I got to really understand what it means to work as a product manager with journalists that are the actual creators of the content, right? And where we as the techies are simply the enablers for that to happen. And I think this is a really um, valuable skill for us in product to learn. And I think it can be applied to many different industries. And I think it's a prerequisite if you want to be good at what you do as a product manager. And uh, now I have just started to work as a product manager in uh, SVD. Um, and there I'm combining all the learnings that I got from working centrally in Shipstead with all the learnings I've gotten from working in Aftonbladet. And of course, I'm learning about a million new things every day, probably, probably every minute. But uh, based on these experiences, I have, um, I have a few reflections that I would like to share with you when it comes to internal mobility. Um, first of all, uh, both you and the company will benefit from it. It's a win-win. And why is that? It grows your experience and your competence when you change roles. But it also grows your understanding for complex challenges that are unique to your company. And I think um, having an understanding for those is what makes you really good at what you do, right? Also, when it comes to solving problems, that means that you need to walk a mile in other people's shoes. Um, so, and moving around in a company, it means you're doing that. From the employer's side, I think um, internal mobility um, is, of course, really, really important because it also means that you will keep talent longer in your organization. And it also means that you will increase the cultural exchange between teams in your organization. If anyone here works in a larger company, you might know that it's easy to create silos, right? And people don't talk to each other. Uh, internal mobility is basically a way to, to uh, reduce this effect and have people collaborating more with each other. So really important. Second, I think it can mean a better recruitment process. Um, I think the reason for that, at least for myself, I feel that it can be really hard to uh, understand what a job means just by reading a job ad and going to an interview, right? But if you move around internally in a company, you have a much better chance of understanding what the role you're applying to actually encompasses and if it's a good fit for, for you. It also means that people in the organization can reach out to you and say, hey, I think you're a really good fit for this position. Um, that's, uh, that's what happened to me. Um, and I'm not sure that I would have applied to the role I have now at SVD if I hadn't been contacted and said, hey, we think you're a good fit for this. Um, and I think um, when it comes to undervaluing if you're a good fit for a role or not, um, we're going to get some really good tips in a couple of minutes for Rieka. So just uh, hold on to that. All right, but then third, um, it's super important to work with the attitudes around internal mobility in your company. Um, I've heard many times from people in different organizations saying, yeah, I, I left to a different company because I didn't want to upset anyone. If you're hearing that, then uh, uh, ring the alarm bell, right? Because uh, that means that talented people are leaving your organization. So if, if you feel that there are those types of attitudes within your company, Talk to HR or whoever might be suitable uh, to make sure that you work on that and create a more open environment for moving around. Okay, those are some uh, reflections. Um, I would like to end by sending you off with uh, four uh, concrete tips. Uh, first of all, uh, remember that it's uh, okay to change jobs might be self-explanatory, but I think we need to remind ourselves about that. Um, changing jobs, it means that you're learning what you're good at and what you want to do, right? And in the long term, your employer will be happier for it. I also uh, really recommend that you uh, are transparent with your manager if you're considering changing positions. I got that advice early on in my career, 
Uh, and I thought that sounded really scary. I'm like, I'm gonna, am I going to tell my manager that I want to leave? That sounds horrible. Um, but uh, it's actually an advice that I have taken with me, and I really recommend you to do the same. Um, and the reason for that is because it can open up a discussion about both the fact that you want to uh, grow, right? And also, uh, it can open up a discussion about what you're missing in your current role, which is super important. Second, so learn new things, understand what you like, and then iterate. By moving around in the company, you will learn many new things, and you'll most likely have a better chance at finding out what you like doing. I think uh, you can compare this to the experience that people might have on dating apps, right? You, uh, you're sw swiping right for one person that you think is the perfect match for you, but actually the person that might be the perfect fit is somebody that's way over here. And I think work is exactly the same. So that means we need to learn by doing, right? So challenge yourself, try new things, um, evaluate what you like and don't like about them, right? And then take that with you into the future. And I want to be really clear that when I say challenge yourself to try new things, that doesn't mean that you should take on more and more senior roles. It can mean that you simply switch to a, a team with a different team culture, or that you switch into a different knowledge area. Or it, it can even mean that you're taking a step back. I don't like that word, but you understand what I mean. Uh, simply because you might feel that this role that you're in currently is not a good fit for you. And that's completely fine. Okay, third, network. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but we're going to come back to that at the end of the session. And finally, I recommend to think of your career as a marathon, not a sprint. All of us in this room are most likely going to work for a really, really long time, whether we like it or not, right? <laughs> and uh, I think internal mobility, it's not a quick fix uh, for your career, but it's a long-term strategy uh, for career growth and development. So be patient and be persistent. and. Uh, Focus on building a strong base of knowledge that can benefit you in for the rest of your career. Thank you. So, um, what should you think about then when putting together your application for your for your next role? Uh, don't tell anyone this, but when I applied to my first job at Shipstead, I asked for such a low salary, so they came back to me with a higher offer. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it can be easy that we get insecure and undervalue ourselves in the recruitment process, right? I, I hope I'll only do it once. We'll see. Uh, but uh, to hopefully send you away with some really good tips on how to not do the most common mistakes, I'm handing over to Rieke. Thank you, Inanna. <laughs> Being a job candidate is uh, really challenging. Um, I myself have been in that position multiple times and uh, you only see one side of the picture, the candidate side. And you are unaware and you have very little information on what's happening on the company side or what the hiring manager is thinking. So if you look at this giant beach ball behind me, no, it's not summer yet, but uh, bear with me. Uh, we have this uh, white side of um, the ball, which is the candidate side. And that's only what we see. And then uh, I would like to see some hands. Who has been here a hiring manager so far? There are quite a few of us. So those of us are aware of the blue side of the ball as well. And in the coming minutes now, I'm going to invite you to shift your perspective and to see that this is uh, actually a two-colored beach ball and uh, not just white or blue. When a former colleague of mine invited me to a manager uh, recruitment process, I was super excited. Um, I did the homework that uh, Inanna suggested earlier, so I knew what I'm looking for in my next position, what challenge I want, what development I want, what kind of culture I want to work in, and the company was really nicely fitting all these. Also something that was important for me, that women are represented on all levels of the leadership, it was present. 
So it sounds like a match made in heaven, right? That uh, the position that uh, you are looking for is there and there is a manager who wants you there. Yeah, and then I looked at the job ad and my heart almost immediately sank. There, there was requirements that I didn't meet. And uh, I think most of us have been in this position and then we start asking ourselves, am I good enough? Should I even apply for this one? Well, my answer is you won't know if you don't try. Uh, getting the rejections is definitely not fun. I had my fair share so far. Um, but uh, that is only the, the white side of the ball, if you remember it. Uh, maybe I can give you a little bit of insight of what's happening on the blue side, on the hiring manager side. So in my case, what I did not know was that the hiring manager was willing to compromise on certain requirements. It was not in the job ad, mind you. So um, lucky for me, my friends did convince me to apply. They went through my application, my CV, and yeah, I did write a cover letter as well, I know, old-fashioned. But um, in both of these documents, my friend made it sure that my experience, my achievements, and what I can bring to the company were definitely clearly expressed. And then they made me push the button. Um, why am I telling you this? So the hiring managers, are not looking for the unicorn that's described usually in the, in the job ad. Um, the hiring manager is looking for an optimal candidate, and in a few moments I'm going to explain to you why. So this optimal candidate is a good mixture of uh, the explicit job requirements that's in the job ad and some of the implicit needs of the team that may or may not be written in the job ad. And only the hiring team is privy to this piece of information, and uh, then you send your application. After you've sent the application, the waiting game begins. Sometimes you don't hear back from the company for a while. This happened to me in this job process. Um, it was February, it was Sportloof, and then February. So eventually they set up a Skype interview for me with two sick hiring team members. Um, now, if uh, you think about it, this is giving away how important that recruitment process was for the company. You wouldn't take an interview when you are sick, not even on Skype. So I knew I have to make it worth their while. Um, they are taking this effort so I prepared stories from my career where I can clearly share with them why am I fit for this position and um, what is it that I can bring to the company. On the blue side, and unknown to me during this interview, my chances of getting the job have very quickly increased. What they saw is that, yes, this candidate is not meeting some of the explicit requirements that we wanted, but she can articulate uh, her achievements, she can articulate what she can bring to this company, and they could imagine me in their team, whereas they might have missed this from some of the more senior candidates. Why? Well, Put yourself in the shoes of the hiring manager for a moment with me. You have a team, maybe several teams, uh, and you're attending to them in your daily work. You are busy. And then you have various organizational tasks as well. And um, then you also need to recruit a new hiring team member. Uh, sorry, a new team member. And um, you have not been trained to recruit. You are not a talent acquisition specialist, um, and you are busy. So you have little time for it. You don't have the skills. You are uncomfortable. You want to get it done fast, right? In this scenario, do you really spend time on a candidate that you do not believe in? No, right? So when you do get a call, from the company, in that moment, they already believe in you. 
and they are moving forward with you because they see a chance. So the sooner we find this person, the better for us, and this is why we are willing to compromise on certain things. And um, then you go for this interview, and the hiring manager only knows what was written in your CV, or maybe what you shared with the talent acquisition specialist or in a previous interview. We don't know how cool a person you are, that you are a great friend, that you have amazing professional achievements. Zero. Only, you are only a piece of paper in that moment. So in this interview situation, the hiring manager starts asking questions. So I'm going to invite you, put yourself again in my shoes. You are going to meet two candidates and you are going to ask them about their experience. And one of my favorite uh, questions is to ask, so tell me about the project that you are most proud about, and uh, tell me what was the goal, why you did it, what is the result, and what was your role in it. So you meet candidate A, whose answer is going to be very elusive and starts telling you things like, we in my team, we're tasked with this project. Together with my team, we accomplished that. And we, my team, we worked on that bug too. Hmm. You are not hiring a whole team, are you? You're just hiring one person. And this candidate clearly cannot separate themselves from their team. It's a problem at this moment. Then you meet candidate B a few mo hours later, maybe. And candidate B goes on and tells you to the same question. Yes, so in my team, we were tasked with this kind of implementation. This was the goal. This is what the results are. And my contribution and my shining moments in this project were these. Um, at this point, I think it's just a theoretical question which candidate you would move forward with. You can clearly see candidate B in your team. I'm going to go with uh, Inanna's previous Tinder uh, uh, idea. So the recruitment process is like dating. You <laughs> start uh, with setting up a profile on Tinder, I guess. Um, that's your CV and uh, your cover letter. And then you start swiping right. That's your job application on the companies. Then yeah, you hope that the companies also start swiping right on you. And hopefully you get some dates out of it. So you start going on interviews on dates with the company. And how is it on dates? Uh, each party tries to woo the other, right? So the company is going to come out and say, ah, oh, we have this fantastic position, gross potential, the benefits, uh, the company culture. And on the other end, you are also going to try to woo the company and say things like, oh, my experience, my skills, uh, my knowledge. Now think a little bit about it. If you go on a date and uh, any of the parties holds back, can you imagine yourself in a relationship with that person? It's going to be really difficult for the other party. So interviewing is the exact same thing. Think about it that uh, the hiring manager and the hiring team want to see you in their team and in a relationship with the company. So show yourself, shine in the interview. And finally, we are coming to the part that uh, Inanna has also mentioned. Time to talk numbers. It's towards the end of the recruitment process when you are going to get an offer, hopefully, now that you have passed through all the interviews. And I get it, it's really hard to put a price tag on myself as well. I, I'm dreading that moment every time, and partly because I'm afraid that I'm going to ask too, for too much. They will think it's outrageous, uh, and they will reject me right away. And then my other fear is that, which is completely on the other side, I'm going to ask for too little, and then I leave money on the table, 
and maybe they will think that, oh, maybe her knowledge is not that good if she asks for so little. So I would like to see some hands. For whom is this scenario familiar with the money talk? <laughs> Damn, girls. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to step up our game. OK. Um, so what happens in my case is when I cannot avoid it anymore, I will finally blurt out the number. And um, I'm ashamed, but I'm going to admit it. It's usually a lower one than I want. Uh, so Inanna, you are not alone. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, maybe I either forget or just don't want to negotiate because I don't want to be the difficult candidate. Um, it sucks. But then I have the information that now you are also going to be privy to. <laughs> um, what's happening on the hiring manager side? So think about it. Um, you need to... Um, put yourself again a little bit in the hiring manager's shoes. They really want a new teammate, right? That's why they are doing the job recruitment. And with each interview, with each step of the way, they are investing more time, more effort into you. When you get to the offer part, they are going to be just as excited about you as you are about that position. Maybe sometimes we are a bit even more excited on the hiring side. <laughs> if you remember why, it's an extra load. So now we are getting in the finish line. So at this point, really, my advice is just do your research and share the higher number. You don't have to share a range. Just say the number, loud and clear. Don't be afraid. Why? After all this effort put into your application on the hiring manager side, do you really think that they are going to reject you because you said a high number? No. The answer is, if uh, you say a high number and throughout the interview we see that your seniority is matching that and you are in the good range, most likely you will get that high number. Cool, eh? And if you happen to say a very high number, but uh, and it's not outrageously high, though, mind you, um, which we deal with much earlier in the process then. And um, we see that your seniority does not necessarily ma match that high number. What do you think will happen? We will come back with a, with a lower number on the offer. And we will try to negotiate with you. So in the end, who gets to decide? You, the candidate. You are the one who can accept the offer or not. So I hope that this piece of insight is just as helpful for you as it is for me to remove some of the nerves around staying the numbers. Um, but then to sum it all up, first of all, you don't know what are the needs of the hiring manager. You only know some of them and you don't know whether they are willing to compromise. So just apply. Number two, uh, in your CV and during the interviews, make sure that you are the one who's shining, not your team. The hiring team is going to make a decision based on the information that is available to them in those interviews and in your CV. They don't have other piece of information. And number three, do the research, say the number, loud and proud. If the hiring team cannot make it, then they are going to come back and negotiate. So I hope that these three nuggets are going to help you shift your perspective on the job search process, and you are going to be able to nail those positions, whether it's internally or in a new company. And before we go, we are at a com conference, right, Inanna? What do we need to pay attention to? I, I, th I think we are. It seems like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we just want to send you away with uh, it's, it's a conference. So talk to somebody you don't know, right? Don't be like me this morning and I just passed all the boots and just grabbed the drinks and the candy. <laughs> but, uh, but talk to people, right? And, uh, and the, I, when I was younger, I thought it was really hard to, to network because I always felt a bit like... Um, 
it felt a bit cynical that I was trying to sort of get something out of the other person. Um, but the older I get, the more I really like networking because it's so nice to meet new people, right? Uh, so, so I just want to send you away with, please speak to somebody you don't know. It's not that hard. Introduce yourself, tell them who you are, and ask them what they do. That's it. Then you have networked. Awesome. That's it for today, I think. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you. I think we have uh, some time for some questions, if you would like. We have one up there. I think you just need to stand up and uh, be, be a little bit loud, and hopefully everyone will hear you. Yes. Okay, so I guess the question is, how many times can you negotiate back and forth about your salary? When you are in already in the company, so this is the regular salary review process. I'm handing this one over to you, Rekha. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> okay, I'm going to give you the honest answer. If you're still getting the low salary leave. Try it once, try it twice, maybe. But if, if you're not getting it, leave. This is the advice that I also gave one of my employees. And she's, I was a, she's a good manager. I, I am her <laughs> manager, right? And I told her that if I cannot get you that salary that you want and that I'm hoping to give you uh, in the negotiations, then um, I, I, I think the best course is that you leave. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, please, no salary more. <laughs> but tell me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go for it. No worries. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah, on LinkedIn, there's basically LinkedIn learning, whatever. You can go for a day. You can take courses with us. Yelena, are we taking notes of that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's really cool. Anyways, there was this um, uh, person that was expert on, you know, recruiting. Mm -hmm. And she said that you shouldn't be first at saying the number. Because, well, yeah. Yeah. So this person's advice was, first you need to, uh, you need to get a picture of what, what range they are thinking about because it's already decided. And then you can get a picture also of what the expectations are with the seniority. Because if you're th thinking 30,000, that is more than would be maybe a senior, mm -hmm. what I imagine is a senior role. So you can at least get a picture of what the company is, what sort of value they expect from that role. So the question is, uh, should you be the first to say your number or should you push the company to say the range first? And I think uh, we are getting both ways. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at our fantastic recruiter over there, Jelena. <laughs> um, and I, have, I can tell you that I have tried both ways. Um, 
Here's my advice, maybe. Why are you thinking about pricing yourself according to the company? Why not put a price tag on yourself that you think you deserve based on your seniority and on your research? And just say that to the company. What will happen uh, in this very early stage is that the, the talent acquisition specialist knows the range that we have put on that, on, on that position. So if you are saying a too high number, they will tell you that this position is might be not as senior as you would hope for. So there will be a very honest conversation. You are not losing time with a company where in the end you are going to get a lower offer and less seniority than what you are hoping for. And um, sometimes what happens is that we are going to tell you that, OK, maybe we can go a little bit higher up not sure we can meet exactly what you are requesting. And then, again, you decide, do you want to proceed with this recruitment process or do you want to stop it? So I would just say my number. And last time, this is what I did. And uh, it was in the internal mobility. And um, the, the talent acquisition person came back to me and said, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> not happening <laughs> and it was fine and she told me why what is the the topmost number that I can get and then we agreed so I really wanted the position in that case Import me. Ah. does this answer your question And, uh, you know, head of e-commerce, e-commerce manager, e-commerce, whatever, that it's kind of difficult to know exactly what it means in each case. And it, the range is uh, uh, too, too big sometimes. Mm. It's, uh, you know, it's very hard to know exactly. So, yeah, mm. I mean, I put things out of price, but uh, I mean, I put um, my price, I decide my price, depending on my um, position. Mm. Um, yeah, what you believe in. Do that. Any further questions? Over there. Thank you for sharing that piece mm. of advice. I'm not sure that everyone heard it. So I'm going to very quickly repeat. So in um, 2023, apparently, the, there is the EU directive to uh, put salary ranges in the job ads. And number two was that uh, in the yearly salary revision, just ask the company about the process and uh, what are the percentiles that they are working with. Um, what is the budget that they have for salary negotiation before you put too high hopes for yourself? And then if it doesn't work with your, s w with your dream salary, then, <laughs> then yeah, then leave. But understand what is happening on the company side. Yes? I have a question. It's not salary. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> that you mentioned is that uh, you can warn or, or proposal it to your manager uh, about uh, the human software. Yes. And, and uh, I, I've, I've seen this kind of thought uh, mm. around this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
So, so I, if I understand you correctly, the question is uh, if you should be transparent with your manager if you want to change yes. roles, basically, and what are the pros and cons? Me and my company. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, I can share it from my personal experience. I think um, it's always a bit scary to be transparent and say that you want to leave your role. Um, for me, that has always worked out really well. Uh, and I've had, I've had some really good uh, managers that have supported me and said, uh, OK, you're, you're ready to, to develop, grow, uh, so please go and do that. That's in, that's in the best interest, interest for your career. Um, with that said, I think, uh, I mean, we, we can all end up in a position where we have maybe a more complicated relationship with our manager, right? And you might not have uh, that relationship of trust where you feel comfortable sharing. And you might also, uh, worst case, you might not even feel that your manager is going to give you uh, any sort of feedback that's going to help you in this process, right? Um, it, yeah, ex and I, I, I don't think that's completely uncommon, unfortunately. But uh, if you feel that, I, I would really recommend to, to find uh, some mentors. It could be another person with, that has around the same seniority as your manager in the company, or somebody externally. Because I think uh, what you need when you are considering changing roles is somebody to, uh, to speak to, right? Um, and, and just basically bounce back and forth if, if this is a good move in your career. Because I, I think it's quite scary to change roles, right? It's a big change. Yeah. And um, uh, so I, I would really recommend that if you don't feel that you're comfortable speaking to your manager, and that's, that's fine, um, then, then find some other people uh, that are perhaps a little bit more senior than you are that you can bounce these thoughts and ideas with and get feedback from. Um, and you, I, I mean, when I have spoken to my managers throughout my career about m leaving, I have usually expected a really bad reaction, but it's gone very well. So it's also sometimes we maybe over, uh, overthink talking about it, right? And I think from the recruiting manager's side, you, you also don't want people in your team that want to leave. So if a person gives you that um, indication, then, then that can also be really good right, for the team culture, because you, you see that, okay, this person needs to grow, but this person is also not happy in the team. Um, but but I, do, I really do understand where you're coming from, so then I would, I would advise to, to get some good mentors to, to bounce those thoughts with. Mm -hmm. Great. I think we are running out of time. Yes. It's um, I think we, we will stay in the room uh, until we're thrown out, which is probably at two. <laughs> so if you want to come down and uh, ask some questions or just grab us later, then we're happy to talk. Uh, you can also scan the QR codes here and you'll get our LinkedIn if you want to speak to us another, at another time. Um, and just uh, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you.